Revelation 19, after these things, I heard something like a loud voice of a great multitude in heaven saying, Hallelujah, salvation and glory and power belong to our God, because he, because his judgments are true and righteous, for he has judged the great harlot who was corrupting the earth with her immorality, and he has avenged the blood of his bond servants on her. In a second time, they said, Hallelujah, her smoke rises up forever and ever. And the twenty-four elders and the four living creatures fell down and worshipped God, who sits on the throne, saying, Amen, hallelujah. And a voice came from the throne, saying, Give praise to our God, all you his bondservants, you who fear him, the small and the great. Then I heard something like the voice of a great multitude, and like the sound of many waters, and like the sound of mighty peals of thunder, saying, Hallelujah, for the Lord our God, the Almighty reigns. Let us rejoice and be glad and give the glory to him, for the marriage of the Lamb has come, and his bride has made herself ready. It was given to her to clothe herself and fine linen bright and clean for the fine linen is the righteous acts of the saints then he said to me write blessed are those who are invited to the marriage supper of the lamb and he said to me these are true words of god then i fell at his feet and feet to worship him but he said to me do not do that i am a fellow servant of yours and your brethren who hold the testimony of Jesus. Worship God, for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. And I saw heaven opened, and behold, a white horse, and he who sat on it. It is called Faithful and True, and in righteousness he judges and wageth war. His eyes are a flame of fire, and on his head are many diadems, and he has a name written on him, which which no one knows except himself. He is clothed with a robe dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. And the armies, which are in heaven, clothed in fine linen, fi fine linen, white and clean, were following him on white horses. From his mouth comes a sharp sword, so that with it so that with it he may strike down the nations, and he will rule them with a rod of iron, and he treads the winepress of the fierce wrath of God the Almighty. And on his robe and on his thigh he has a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Then I saw an angel standing in the sun, and he cried out with a loud voice, saying to all the birds, Which fly in mid-heaven? Come. Assemble for the great supper of God, so that, so that you may eat the flesh of kings and the flesh of commanders and the flesh of mighty men and the flesh of horses and, and, and of those and of those who sit on them and the flesh of all men, both free men and slaves and small and great. And I saw the beast and the kings of the earth and their armies assembled to make war against him who sat on the horse and against his army. And the beast was seized, and with him the false prophet who performed the signs in his presence by which he deceived those who had received the mark of the beast and those who worshipped his image. These two were thrown alive into the lake of fire which burns with brimstone, and the rest were killed with a sword, which came from the mouth of him who sat on the horse, and all the birds were filled with their flesh. And I'm actually reminded of one of the commandments in the Bible, where it talks about, thou shalt not have any other gods before me. It's one of the commandments. Ten Commandments, and one thing that the Lord really, really considered sin is when we're putting anyone or anything before God, when we are loving something before God. 
God should be the one person that we love the most above anyone or anything else. And now if there's something or someone that is above God, I encourage you to repent and to give up your idols, lay them down. And if that means cutting people out of your life that you can just not keep, be, keep like, if you can't, with them, you can't keep God first, and you've tried, and you've tried doing that, that's where it gets to the point where you're going to have to, if your relationship with God matters that much, there are times where you're going to have to cut people off if it becomes too much of an idol. We should want to do whatever it takes to follow him. Even if that means we are going to have to cut people off that may become an idol or cutting off things that may become an idol. I mean, like, yes, obedience is better than sacrifice. But at the end of the day, we can't have anything or anyone before God or we can't love anyone or anything before God. And when, it, when that is the case, it becomes an idol. And... He doesn't want to have he doesn't want us to have anything before him and so we just need to keep that in mind and you know the Lord's coming is it, it, it can happen any day now we don't know the day or the hour he, he will come like a thief in the night and we'll just come just like that and just know that the verse that kind of really stood out to me when it comes to that is verse 7 um, where it talks about let us rejoice and be glad and give the glory to him for the marriage of the lamb has come and his bride has made herself ready the lord wants us to be ready for his coming he wants us to be ready and prepared and have our lamps lit and to just can be in continuance repentance daily repentance to him asking the lord for forgiveness whenever we fall short not allowing the sin to linger in our lives living for him by doing what he's calling us to do he wants us to be obedient but how can we say that we're obedient if we're not being obedient to one thing if we have idols in front of god if we have anything before god that is an idol and i'm not trying to condemn anybody but i'm saying this because i've been there i have been there i I was in a relationship where I put that person before God, but it doesn't make it right. I had to learn from that. We all do too. And the end of the day, it's like, well, you have to remember that in if you're that really serious about God, you're really serious about your relationship with God, you would want to cut off those idols in your life. But for those of you that are just willing to keep going the way that you are, to keep going the way that you're going with keeping anyone or anything before God or loving anyone or anything before God and you are okay with that, that sin and you're living in sin and we're not called to live in sin. We're called to live for God to pursue holiness and righteousness. We're not called to run after sin or go back to what we used to do. We're a new creature in Christ. The old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. And so we just need to be ready and make sure we are right with God and make sure we are repenting daily whenever we mess up and making sure we make that a habit, making sure we're right with God, asking God to change our heart posture, asking God to create in us a pure heart and renew our right spirit within us and allowing God to change you from the inside out into the person he wants you to become. I think that's so important that we really ask ourselves, is there anyone or anything that I'm putting before God? And if so, is that something you're willing to put aside for God and put God first? And you, Or is that something you can do with that person or that thing? And if that's the case, if you can't do with that person or that thing, that's where you need to cut it off. If your relationship with God is that serious, you'll want to do that if that is the case. But in case, I'm probably going to make a part two just in case the Lord has more to say that he wants me to talk about. So, yeah, I'm going to make a part two.